for the Lord to be here. Thanking him for his miracle working power. Thanking him for his keeping power. Thanking him for being who he is. I brought two Bibles tonight. We gonna go to work. You know, I wanted to talk about, I've been working on, and the Lord wouldn't let me do it. Matter of fact, I was studying and trying to get things together, and well, like a heavy sleep just came over me, and I couldn't, what I wanted to do, I couldn't do it except I got all my stuff together. And the Lord said, this is what I want you to See, you have, to, you have to seek God for something to say if y'all don't know that or not. But, uh, and I'm trying to say, you know, we've been, the Lord has just been moving so people talking about all his blessings and all of his deliverance. We've seen the miracle working power of God in action. And I just wanted to just sort of work this thing and let everybody just know faith he is. Now faith he is a substance of things hoped for. It is the evidence of things not seen and all of that. And but that wasn't what the Lord wanted. So I've learned. I learned how to listen to him. So tonight I got for you all what he gave me. And we're going to do for a little while. It's gonna be, I don't know how long it's going to take. We're going to work this. Is that all right? Uh, we're going to go as far as we can get one time, and then we'll go farther the next time. But the series we're getting ready to start on is who and what is the Holy Ghost. Who and what is the Holy Ghost? Is that all right? And in this lesson, we're going to talk about some good things. Is that all right? Who and what is the Holy Ghost? So we're going to have to establish some facts. And every time we come, Tonight is going to be just the groundwork. I'm not going to give you all the information. You're going to do some work. Uh-huh. Somebody say, oh, Pastor, I thought you was going to break it down. Oh, are you, come on. This is going to be good. Who and what is the Holy Ghost? And if you notice, his name is Holy Ghost. He's a Holy Ghost. A Holy Ghost. That means if he's a Holy Ghost, we're going to have to sort of establish the fact of a uh, definition of what a ghost is. Is that all right? So we're going to know what a ghost is. We know he's, he's got to be, and since he's the Holy Ghost, we're going to have to establish the nature of a Holy Ghost. Meaning, if he's a, if he's a Holy Ghost, it, it sort of defines, uh, distinguishes what kind of ghost he is. Wouldn't you all say? So we're going to have to establish a fact when you think of a ghost, the characteristic, the nature of a ghost. And then we're going to find out that this particular ghost is holy. And since we know God is holy and this ghost is holy, then he's going to be can't say too much. I know some of y'all want me to go and talk, but God, I can't say too much. That's, that's, that's some of the work we're going to do. Mm -hmm. Since he's a ghost, we're going to need to sort of find out where he lives. Is that all right? What 
does he live? A ghost. People, a lot of time they now they think ghosts live in haunted houses, graveyards, and places such as that. So this ghost here is holy. Matter of fact, he can be sitting right beside you. I'm just saying. I ain't gonna say too much. Is he? We'll try to bring out and bring out the point and find out: Is he a homeless ghost? Is he homeless? Is that all right? A homeless person is somebody don't have a place to stay, right? So we're going to have to find out, is he homeless? It's all right, boy, it's going to get good. We're going to establish who he is. And then we're going to have to establish what he is. Boy, 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 this. I'm going to read something for you here, if y'all don't mind. We're going to sort of work with this part to start off with. Is that all right? The first chapter of the book of Acts. Uh-huh. Some of y'all thought y'all had me. Some of y'all thought y'all had me pegged, huh? Uh-huh. We're going to start with Acts 1 and 1. Acts 1 and 1. And what did it say? The former treaties. The former treaties. The former treaties. When you think of treaties, you think of established troops, agreements. Is that all right? A treaty is normally an agreement, a petition that's been a declaration. Is that all right? When back we hear about in the days of old when they would make uh, the United States Army say would make a treaty with the Indians. When the United States would make a treaty with another country, that treaty would be a written statement. A declaration is asked to say this is what and how we're going to do it. So when you say the former treaties, that means this was something that was done prior. Is that all right? How many read? Have I made? Have I made? O Theophilus. O Theophilus. Of all that Jesus began. And this, and this fellow, Theophilus, is somewhat cloudy who he is, but then there is a reference to him. So, Stephanie, give me Luke 1 and 3. Luke 1, 3, and 4. Y'all with me? Luke 1, 3, and 4 says what? It seemed good to me it se- also. It seemed good to me also. Having had perfect understanding. This is Luke talking. Y'all remember Luke is a physician. Pretty educated. Have a perfect understanding. In other words, I'm not a fool. I got perfect understanding. Come on. Of all things from the fir- very first to write unto thee in order. I, I'm writing unto thee in order. Luke sounds almost like an attorney, don't it? Politician. I'm writing unto thee in order. I have, I have a perfect understanding being there from the beginning. I know what it's all about. I know what I'm talking about. Read. Most excellent Theophilus. Oh, so he's calling him most excellent. Most excellent was a term that was given to a Roman, how 
could I say, a, 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 a Festus, a Roman officer, one in authority, one uh, most excellent Theophilus. Is that all right? And we'll find this term was used three times in the Bible. Is that all right? Used it one time when he was talking to Festus and one time when it was referring to Felix. So most excellent Theophilus, it seems, and you all might not believe this, but Jesus had some folk that was Romans that were saved. Yes, he did. But they had to stay under the cover. Yes. See, they couldn't blow their cover. Nicodemus. So, and, and, and then Paul, uh, the scripture says how they went to those that were authority uh, not to blow their cover. Because you might not believe it. Sometimes it's good to have saved folks in high places. Somebody can pull a string, open a door for you. So every, everybody that got saved wasn't vagabonds. So here he says, most excellent Theophilus. Read. That thou mightest know. That thou mightest know. Watch what he's getting ready. That thou mightest know what? The certainty, the certainty of those things, of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. Oh, so look like Theophilus had gotten some instructions, and he's not talking about what Caesar said. Now you can read the rest of that for yourself. I just want to bring that in there and let us know who Theophilus was. Theophilus was no vagabond. This was a man of authority, a man of, and then even at that, Luke, look how Luke, uh, uh, even when Paul's addressing, oh, most noble Festus, most noble Felix, you know, he gave them recognition. So Luke is not writing to this man in the sense like, well, you just my, my brother in Christ, but he's recognizing him and giving him his props for being who he is. And, he, and, and look like uh, Luke is saying, you know what, I've got to reassure you that this ain't no fluke. Whew. You see, you can receive the Holy Ghost and be in a high-class position. Your job position may cause you not to be able to ta-ta like other folk can because you got to protect your image. We often see the sign, the fish on the cars and different things like that. See, a lot of that came up during the, the Reformation, during the persecution of the saints. And people had emblems and symbols that they made in order to do, just like in the time of slavery. They, they sang certain songs. And some of the songs that they sang gave credence to that. Okay, we're going to make a run tonight. <laughs> and I'll be back and I'm coming home in the morning. Well, some folks think, well, you know, we're going to glory. No, we're going we to make a run down south, and we're going to bring, bring some of our brothers back. And, and they, had, they used songs. They, you know, God's, were, God's smart. They used songs to, uh, to coach stuff. When we were little, my mother used to use a, a thing called pig Latin. I didn't know altogether what they were talking. She and her sister, some folks from Louisiana, you know, they got some stuff over there that we don't, we don't have in Texas. Ain't nobody get mad about Louisiana, but I'm just saying. They got some stuff over there in L.A. that we don't have in Texas. Sometimes they, they can run that stuff down to you. See, my folk were from over around Long Street and Kikipoo and stuff. Yeah, yeah, Long Branch, all that. Yeah, that's where my folk came. They came, they came from L.A. That was, they, they first started when they moved to Texas later, Long Street. Oh, God help us. I went over there one time, and uh, my my grandmother's sister lived in a house, and the house had a hallway right down the middle. On one side of the house was the kitchen. On the other side was the bedroom. I mean, when you ate and finished up at night, you don't be running out there going to the kitchen and getting the leak because you got to go outdoors. So when they shut the kitchen down, the kitchen is shut down. I mean, the hall went straight through the house. It was like two houses on the one roof. <laughs> so what am I saying? I'm trying to get us to understand some. This, this Holy Ghost is very important. Uh -huh. We're going to try to establish who he is, what he is. 
We're going we're gonna to look at what, you know, well, he's a ghost. That's gotta, we got to break that down, a ghost. And he's a holy ghost? Of course. Folk get hurt running from ghosts. People get, they scared to lay down and go to sleep at night. Talking about ghosts. People associate ghosts with haunted houses and all this kind of stuff. Some of y'all might have a little funny stuff. Folks, they can look over their shoulder and see stuff. And my baby's born with veils over their face. And they can, I ain't, I'm buying, I ain't, I ain't seen nothing. I'm sorry. <laughs> so here we find Luke talking to Theophilus. We find the same fellow Theophilus is mentioned. Luke mentions him again. Uh, I believe you'll, you'll find out that Luke is considered a given note of being the writer of the book of Acts. All right? So then he said, if we notice here, Acts 1 and 2, we'll go back there. But I want y'all to remember something what he said what, or that in that fourth verse in Luke where he, that, uh, he told Theo, uh, Theophilus that thou mightest know the certainty. Y'all see that? Of those things wherein thou hast been instructed. In other words, you've been told this, you've been taught this, this has been put, you've been instructed that this is the way it is. And sometimes you have to come back and remind people of the certainty of what holiness is all about. Because some people, they, they say for a while, but then Believe it or not, if you don't stay rooted in this thing, what you once knew can slip away from you. It don't always have to slip away all at one time, but it can slip away from you. And the only way you keep it, you stay in church. The only way you keep it, you study. That's when the Bible tells us what? To study to show thyself approved, a workman unto God, need it not be in shame, rightly dividing the word. So you got to study. We, don't, we, don't, we, we study to, to show ourselves approved that we may be approved of God. Uh -huh. Now, verse, verse 2 says what? Until the day in which he was taken up. So we know Jesus was taken up. Read. After that. After that. He threw. Oh, notice what he said. He threw. After that, he was taken up. So if he was taken up, that means he's not here. Is that right? God, I didn't want to hear y'all say it. He was taken up, but after that, he threw the Holy Ghost. What did he do? Had given commandments. Had given commandments. Unto the apostles. Oh, so he gave some commandments to the apostle through the Holy Ghost. Is that all right? Come on and read. Whom he had chosen. Whom he had chosen. To whom? Also, he showed himself alive. He showed himself alive? After his passion by many infallible. Infl infallible. Infallible. Infallible proof. proof. In other words, undeniable. You can't knock it. You can't rock it. You can't shake it. You can't tear it apart. That's all right, honey. Help me out. I, at least I get an amen somewhere. Read. Being seen. Of them 40 days. Y'all remember me telling you God was a numbers God. Y'all notice that? Jesus was seen, having been seen of them 40 days. This was before his ascension. Read. And speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. And Jesus took advantage. He wasn't just here sitting on a log somewhere on a seat. But he was working on things and teaching them things concerning the kingdom of God. Come on and read. And being assembled together with them. And now he was there with them, being assembled together with them. What did he do? Commanded them. He gave them a commandment, an order. Do what? That they should not depart from Jerusalem. In other words, stay right here. Gave them a commandment that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but do what? Wait for well, the promise. Wait for the promise. So we see then, what is the promise? So the promise would be the Holy Ghost. So that's one thing we know about the Holy Ghost just from this scripture. 
that he was promised. And the scripture said in the book of Hebrews, and these that all died in the faith, not having received the promise. Meaning they didn't have what we say we got. But they all died in the faith. They didn't backslide because somebody sang their song. They didn't backslide because somebody looked at them funny. They didn't backslide because the pastor set them down. They didn't leave the church because, well, I don't like the way you did that. Just saying. Woo. Lord. Wait for the promise. And being together, he commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem. Your blessing is at Jerusalem. Y'all might not believe it. If God has your blessing in, in a certain spot, at a certain church, you can buck all you want to, say whatever you want to, be a wild goat if you want to. You're not going to get your blessing until you go back home. Oh, pastor. He told him Jerusalem. He didn't say Samaria. I mean, if you're sitting up in Samaria, you're going to miss your blessing. <laughs> well, I know y'all right know him. I know y'all right now. Y'all trying to take all this in, pastor. Pastor. Whew, pastor. They should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait for the promise of the Father. Which said he, ye have heard of me. Wait for the promise of the Father. That I means it's not Jesus' promise. It's a promise of the Father. So it's the promise of the Father. Is that all right? So it's not Jesus' promise. It's the Father's promise. Is that all right? Amen. Which said he, you have heard of me. Come on and read. For John, truly baptized with water. Uh -oh. He said, John, for real, all John had was the baptism of water. Is that all right? Read. But ye shall be But there's a conjunction. Now it's something getting ready to change. But what? Ye shall be baptized. We're going to be baptized with what? The Holy Ghost. Oh. So now we find out how we get it. We're, we're going to be baptized. Anybody want to tell me right quick what the word baptized means? Y'all scared to talk? Can I a hand? In, I, can I a hand? Can anybody want to raise a hand so I can identify your answer with you? Because if you're right, I give you credit. If you're wrong, I'm put an X on. Miss Cookie got her hand up. All right, what did you say? What? Can y'all hear her? She says she can't hear you. I believe you can talk louder. Oh, thank you. Praise the Lord. So to be baptized is to be submerged. To be submerged, that means we're going to be com completely engulfed by it. When you're baptized, you are submerged in water. Can anybody hear me? You are submerged in water, all of you. When you sprinkle somebody, you just sprinkle the water on their head or wherever. But when you're baptized, you are completely it encompasses all of you. So when we got baptized with the Holy Ghost, look like to me, your little toe and your big toe and was just <coughs> submerged. We're going to be baptized with the Holy Ghost. Not many days hence. Is that all right? It's coming. Is that all right? Woo. I'm going to show you how, how people's mindset is. I'm, I'm just laying this out so y'all can get some of this. Read what he said. When 
They therefore were come together. Come on and read. They asked of him, saying, Lord, will thou at this time restore again the kingdom up to Israel? You know, they, they still was out of the loop. Can you imagine all this time, all they spent with Jesus, they still out of the loop. They're still looking at the restoration of the kingdom of Israel. And that's not what the Lord is talking about. He's talking about one thing. But look, look I mean, y'all notice these disciples. They've been with Jesus and all that. But after all of that, they still don't get the picture. And there are some people today, and the reason the Lord laid this on my heart, there are some people today still don't get the, the baptism of the Holy Ghost. There's a lot of people today that still think that if you just confess and they dip you in water, you receive the Holy Ghost. Do you all not know there are numerous organizations, churches and denominations and whatever, and they have a principle based upon the fact that when you just join church, you confess your sin, you got the Holy Ghost. And they deem themselves, they call, and some people will go to church no, we're going to dig into this, if y'all don't mind. I really want you to do your homework. Have you ever noticed how there's, there's a sincerity that goes with worshiping God? But there's people that have that sincerity. They will cry. They will faint. They'll pass all kinds of things. But they don't have a born-again experience. There were people that, I mean, I know you all have seen them. We, we used to go and sing at those different churches, and sometimes uh, we get to singing and folk get happy, and they fall out. I know some of y'all have been there. And they fall out. Some of them, they had, some of them the, the ushers had some smelling sauce. You go out a little bit and stay, they're going to hit you, whoop under your nose, bring you back. And I've seen them fall out, and they carry them out like a beef, man. I'm talking about fall out, bam, and they out cold, and they pick them up. Some, <laughs> They pick them, I mean, literally pick them up and carry them out like they on a stretcher. Take them back in the back. Let them cool off. Then they come back in there. We've heard ministers get up and preach and say, help me, Holy Ghost. We're going to dig into this. It's going to be some good digging. And, we, and it's going to be one of them things that going to challenge us. Yep. You can profess and not possess. There are things that seem like the Holy Ghost. And I'm going to tell you something. The Holy Ghost can touch you. Sometimes folk be singing. And they get to singing and maybe not have the Holy Ghost, but they get to singing. But it's just something about us that connects with that. And when you get to singing and, and, and it gets good, you feel something, them little, them little doodads, they start messing with you. And sometimes it'll make you cry. You know, nobody do nothing wrong. Just because you cried, that don't mean you got the Holy Ghost now. I ain't getting no help right now. See, sometimes there's a mistaken identity. Sometimes there's a mistaken identity. People think because this happened, I got it. But that, that's people cry at funerals. People cry watching movies. Ain't getting no help right now. All past. Uh, folks sit up and watch a movie and break down and start crying. I remember years ago when I was young, they had this movie, Imitation of Life. And when I saw that Imitation of Life, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a, I ain't no grown man, but I'm a man. And I saw Imitation of Life, my sister and them crying, and I'm crying. Well, some folk cry because maybe Roger Rabbit's girlfriend got killed or whatever, you know. They just got, they need something just to cry about. But people come to church, and they, and they get to hollering. Y'all have never seen people come to church, and they get to hollering, they screaming, and thank you, thank you, thank you. And the usher got a hold of them, and ah, ah, they, just, ah, they, 
get to Harlem. We're going to find out some stuff about the Holy Ghost. It's some hollering to go with the Holy Ghost, but there's all this hollering the Holy Ghost. There's a tongue that go with the Holy Ghost, but there's all this tongue. There's, some, there's a tongue that's an imposter. You got to know the difference. I ain't getting no help right now. Just because somebody out of Tata. I mean, I'm talking about you just saw this man out there cursing and going on. And then he get up in the pulpit. And he get up there and then speak in some kind of tongue. And if you, I'm going to tell you something else. We're going to deal. We're going to deal. We're going to deal. You, uh, even when you're saved and you work in the altar, a person can be on the altar and they can speak in a tongue. But you got to be sharp enough to recognize the real tongue and the imposter. Because if you don't, just like the individual that's doing it, they can be fooled and the devil make them think they got it. Sometimes, sometimes they say in the old church, folk come to the altar and the old people say, you got it too quick. Man, you got, you got to come to the altar five or six times. You got to fall out. You got you to gotta foam at the mouth like a mad dog, and, and you got to go and go and go. And, and you get up there, and they, they ask you, after they, after they um, told you, thank you, Jesus, thank you, Jesus. And one said, save me, Lord. The other said, save me, Lord. They would say, they always tell him, yes, let go. This one said, turn loose, let go, hold on. They say, feel me, feel me, feel me, feel me. You get all that. And then when they get through, they run you through that about a good hour. You ain't had no water, and you cotton mouth because you don't said everything what they said. You ain't even had a chance to break. And they take shifts on you. One come in, then another. another. Then you got this one on this side. This one here saying, hold on. This one saying, let go. This one in front of it. And sometimes they get to, they be spraying on you. You know, I got it. And you're trying to stay focused. They, don't, they ain't putting their hand over their mouth. And this one here, all this is happening. You're getting, you're, getting, you're getting sprinkled. God help us. Then, they, then when they get finished with you, and you try to get your man and hatch you down there so long, you try to get up and you try to straighten your knees up, and, 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 you, and then some of them, you're almost about to fall out, and they, they take shit, hold you up, and then they, God help them. Then every night somebody putting their hands all on your head and they rocking you. And, and when they get through with you, come on, baby, tell them what the Lord did for you. I thank the Lord for saving me. And, 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 and you're trying to say he fear you. No, no, he didn't fear He blessed you. He blessed you. Come on back tomorrow night. Yeah, he blessed you. He blessed you. Yeah. You're trying to say he fear me. They said, no, he blessed you. He ble- Come back tomorrow night. They're going to run you through the ring. Of, but I don't want them. When they turn you loose, it, it motivates you to get feel. Because you say, man, if I can get out of this press shop, woo, if I can get out of this present shop, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. Yes, thank you, Lord. <laughs> We're going to find out about how you receive it. How you receive how you receive the Holy Ghost. All these some things we're gonna we're gonna work on. And I'm gonna give you, I'm giving you this so you can start your notes and get your homework together. How you receive it. Some people have all kinds of statements. Some say, well, when they take you to the water and they baptize you, that you receive. The Holy Ghost. But then there's scripture that brings out whether or not you receive the Holy Ghost. I'm going to just throw something in there when I said that. Give me, uh, what's that? Uh, 1 Corinthians 1 and 15. Did I say it right? 1 Corinthians 1 and 15. You got it? scared to read it. Lest any should say 
that I had baptized in mine own name. Go up to the 14th verse. It just popped in my mind. I thank God. What? That I baptized none of you. Paul said, I, I, I thank God I ain't baptized none of y'all. Why? But Cephas. Uh-huh. And Gainus. Read. Least any should say that I had baptized in mine own name. Paul said, I, 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 <laughs> let somebody be saying I was baptizing in my name. Come on and read. Read. And I baptized also the household of Stephanus. Of Stephanus. Come on. Besides, I know not. Besides that, I don't know nobody else I baptized. Why? Read. Whether I baptize any other. Uh-huh. For Christ sent me not to baptize. He didn't send me to dip folks in water. Now, Paul wrote most of the New Testament. And this is the emphasis he put on water baptism. And he was doing this because people were saying, I'm a Paul. And I'm of Apollos. And I'm of Cephas. They had separated like they have now. If you don't have the same color card I have, we don't associate with you. If you're not under my bishop and my apostle, we can't fellowship. If your church don't have the same name out there on the marquee, we, we can't fellowship with each other. People draw lines in the sand. They, don't, they say, well, we, 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 say, we don't say we're the only thing that's right, but you act like you are. So we, we, we find, and Paul said, other than that, he said, but I thank God I didn't baptize none of y'all. Uh -huh, but God did not send me to baptize, but what? To preach the gospel. He sent me to preach the gospel. Is that all right? So we see what we're dealing with. He sent me to preach the gospel. Preaching the gospel is not water baptism. Why the baptism is an outward show of an inward work of grace. Is that all right? Amen. When a person gets saved and filled with the Holy Ghost and we baptize you in water, we cannot go out there and dig a hole and bury you, cover you up, and then uncover you to say you've been buried with Christ. So what do we do? We use a liquid grave. Showing that we are, you are bearing that old man, and when you come up, you're coming up in the newness of life. So I'm asked the question then, is it right to baptize a person if they haven't received the Holy Ghost? I'm going to leave that question out there. I know some of y'all wonder, well, that's what you're going to say. We'll talk about that another day. Put your lesson together. That's a good question. If a person hasn't been filled with the Holy Ghost, but yet they have repented, are they worthy of baptism? I'm not answering it tonight. I'm not answering it tonight. Baby Jesus, let's give y'all something to work on now. So, come on, let's go back to, uh, <laughs> go back to Acts. Acts 1 and 7. And he said unto them, it is not for you to know the time. No, what is it? It's, it's not for you to know the time. What? Or the season. Or the season. Which the father had put in his own power. Oh. So Jesus letting you know, I don't even know. I hope y'all picked up on that. He said, uh, he said that the Father has put in his own power. I don't know. Ask me. I don't, I, I don't even know that. But then he turned around and said, but a conjunction. Is that all right? What's going to happen? You shall receive power. You're going to receive power. After. Oh, whoa, whoa. You're going to receive power. After. 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 You don't.
don't get power to after. After. You don't receive power. And then we're going to have to break down what that power is. Is that power just going to be the, come on, Jesus, huh? come on. Power. And ye shall receive power. That's a strong, that's one of the strongest verses in the Bible. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost. Notice he said Holy Ghost. We got a lot of church folk want to call Holy Spirit. All of the spirits. See, sometimes folk want to use Holy Spirit when they don't want to sound too sanctified. They want to be a con- uh, uh, a moderate Christian. I guess I'm getting messed up because I've been watching these impeachment stuff. But they want to be moderate Christians. They don't want to sound too, too bold. So, oh, I, I thank the, I thank God. And even the commentators sometimes they write in their little commentary. They don't want to say Holy Ghost. They want to say Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit sounds religious. Holy Ghost sounds delivered. I'm just saying. And see, if we're not careful because of the fact that somebody say, you got a Holy Ghost? When you think of Holy Ghost, you, you say Holy, you can live with a spirit or the, the terminology of but when you say the Holy Ghost, whew, Holy Ghost. If I, if you young ladies sitting right there, and if I told y'all there was a, there was a spirit, I saw a spirit behind you all. You might, uh, so, okay. But if I, if I told you, I said, I saw a ghost. Man, some folk getting ready to vacate the premises. They're getting ready to move their seats to the other side of the church. I said, I saw a ghost right over there, right behind y'all right there. Hmm. Oh, jeez. <laughs> but you shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you or has come I better get. I better leave that alone. I better leave that alone. I better leave that alone. Upon you, upon you. That's what the book said. The book said upon you, didn't it? Didn't it say upon you? Is that in y'all's Bible? Read. And ye shall. Oh, oh! After he's come upon you, and there's a but in the beginning. Now we got an and. And what? Ye shall be witnesses. Now you're going to be a witness. When you're a witness, you're one that know or have seen firsthand knowledge of the facts. But you can't be a witness until you get the Holy Ghost. Or he come upon you. Because if he come upon you, then you know who he is. If he hasn't come upon you, you you just hitting and missing. You you can be a, a secondhand witness. <laughs> Somebody said, "Well, I, they told me no, that's a secondhand witness." But a firsthand witness is one. What did, what did Luke tell him when he was talking to the, uh, Theophilus? I want to uh, assure you. I was there from the beginning. So that gave me the right, the, the permission or the privilege of saying what I'm saying because I was there from the beginning. I know what.